Good morning, this is Erica from Launching Legacies. Welcome to our daily devotional. Today we are continuing our devotional on um, hope, misplaced hope. And today's devotional is called, God, what is good? And I guess the sub clause could be for me, right? Another question, I mean, another part of the question could be, what is good for me? Okay, so yesterday we started this discussion on hope and we talked about how um, I was studying and the word and spending time with the Lord and the Lord was talking to me about people being disappointed because they had what they thought was hope, like what they thought they were hoping for, they were in fact just um, not necessarily understanding one of the major concepts of hope. And we talked about the definition of hope is to expect good. And then we went to Genesis and we learned that man has, um, since since Adam and Eve, made a decision on what is good and what is evil. And that's not necessarily um, the right position to have. We talked about how people have different different opinions on what is good and what is evil. So it's important that we search God to know what he defines as good because he is the author of what of understanding the difference between good and evil. He knows that. And so we want to seek him to say, God, what is good? So today we're talking about God, what is good? Have you ever thought about um, looking at a, at a place in your life and uh, let's say it has to do with employment. Yesterday we talked about that, right? Someone wanted to get a promotion on their job and so their hope was that they were going to get this um this promotion on their job and they they hoped it because they believed it's good okay that's good so i'm gonna hope for it and that seems sufficient enough for them but when i talked about yesterday us not necessarily knowing that what we think is good may or may not be good so it's not necessarily someplace that we need to put our hope in meaning we don't necessarily need to expect this thing if we don't really know whether or not that is good for us and so if we couple that we follow up on that we don't know what is necessarily good for us because when we judge, we're using our judgment. But we're looking like this in a tunnel. The scripture says we're looking in a mirror dimly lit, right? We only see a portion of what is really happening, what's really going on. And so we know that when he who is perfect has come, when that scripture is fulfilled, we will know even as we are known, right? And so what is he saying? Look, at, we're going to see things clearly when, when the fullness, the perfection and fullness of Christ is made manifest on earth. That's that's in the future. That's not that's not right this minute. So right now we get to see things only partially, only a small bit of, of what we understand. This creates a dependency on God. Why? Because what we may think is good is not necessarily good. We need to ask God about that, right? What is good? Is, is this good? Is that good? How can I understand what is good, right? And when I was uh, meditating on this concept that we don't necessarily know what's good and we're going to have to ask to get an understanding, I knew that most people would say, oh, well, you look in the word and you look in the word. And I'm and I'm all for reading the word. Clearly, I, I know a lot of the word and, that, and I think that it has um, by and all means helped me to know God because it is just demonstration of the character of God and the knowledge that he wants us to come into. At least a glimpse of that knowledge is in the word. And so we look at the word of God and that's great. But I know a lot of people who know the word of God and still don't by reading the word fully understand what is good. In other words, as the word is a guide, the word is a guide to bring us into relationship with the father. It doesn't replace God, right? We don't worship our Bibles. Um, we don't say, oh, you are, uh, the, the Bible in itself is enough, right? Why? Because even the word, even the scripture can be perceived one way or another. And so without an understanding, right? And the understanding comes from the person of God, not from the, just the written scripture. You got to know him, right? And so without that knowing God and getting an understanding, even we can take the scriptures and turn them into whatever kind of monstrosity we want them to be. Because why? We're deciding that we understand something. We're deciding again, what is good, even amongst the scripture. So we want to be mindful to understand that relationship is necessary. There's a balance that's necessary when we're talking about even the scriptures, which means that we come to God in the place of relationship or in the place of community with him, communion with him. And we ask him, Hey God, you know, in this circumstance, what is good? Because what you're not going to do is uh, scroll through the scripture and find yourself saying, Oh, okay. Um, 
uh, this is talking about my job at um, this particular branch of the bank. And it's saying that what I should do on this branch of the bank is this. You're not going to find it explicitly written like that in the word, right? Because it's a generalized truth. It is reflection of the character of God. You'll definitely find what you shouldn't do. You'll definitely get wisdom there. But you're going to need to get an understanding. And the understanding doesn't just come from the written word. Like I said, it comes from the relationship with God. And so here we, we look at, we open the Bible. We know the character of God. We know what he wouldn't want us to do, right? He, we know that we should be good stewards. We know we should work hard and so on and so forth. We still don't have the answer as to whether or not this thing that we're looking for, this promotion, this movement, this advancement is good. So we still got to bring back into relationship and say, you know what, God, what is good for me in this situation? You know, God, what, what are you saying is good? And so it drew me to a scripture in Psalms, actually uh, a very fond scripture of mine from my childhood. Um, and it's Psalm, the 34th chapter. And um, I'm going to read the 11th verse and moving down. It says, come ye children, come children. I'm sorry, I memorized it in the King James. So come you children, listen to me and I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Okay, that sounds good. And then he says, who is the man who loves life, who desires life, excuse me, and loves many days that he may see good? Hmm. And he leaves it with a question. And then it says, keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking God. And so he says, don't depart from evil and seek good, uh, seek peace and pursue it. So what is he saying? He's like, look, get away from the, don't, don't, don't have anything to do with evil. But I thought about more the question in the 12th verse. And the 12th verse says again, who is the man who desires life? And loves many days that he may see good. And I thought about it. God, who is the man who loves life and desires many days that he may see good? Like, who is that person that really wants to do a good work? Like, what what does the characteristic of that person look like? And I thought about it that that person is always seeking clarity and understanding from you, God. Like, that person who wants to, to live many days, uh, who, who desires life and wants to live many days they seek from you clarity understanding direction they are always before you petitioning you for god what is good you know what's good for me right here in the situation in this relationship what is the good thing to do god where am i where do i need to go right or go left like and this becomes a part of a very intimate conversation right but i think about that man the man that seeks that desires life and wants to live many days that he will see good that that person knows that the only way to really live that life to really have those many days is to seek god for every concept, even concepts that we feel like we already understand, like what is good? Because if we're wise enough and humble enough, we'll realize that we can say something is good and it's not necessarily true. We can believe it to be good because it benefits us. It falls into a fantasy. It goes into a desire. It goes on a path that we think it is. And we can find out that some of the things that we thought are good can be dastardly. I mean, horribly devastating and completely deprivating for our life. I don't know about you, but I've had situations like that. I thought that, I thought it was good. I didn't just think it was okay. I actually thought this was good at some point. And it turned everything into a big catastrophe. And I'm like, what in the world is going on? Well, the simple solution is just to ask in this situation, right where I am with my family, in this relationship, with this job, in this circumstance, God, I need you to tell me what is good. Because what I think is good can't necessarily be trusted. And I'm okay with that, right? So that takes a position of humility to say, you know, I'm okay with the fact that I might not be right about what is good, but I'm going to need you to tell me, God, what is good? Because I do need to know. Well, I want to encourage you with this. I... um never really thought about uh, this scripture. I mean, I never really thought about the lo loving life and living many days and desiring life and loving many, living many days, excuse me. But I think maybe a year ago or so, I was thinking about, you know, I don't know, what's going to happen, what's to come and, you know, 
what's going to happen moving forward? And I spent some time and I was like, okay, well, God, you know, will I live a long life or will, will my life be, you know, shorter than, than normal? And neither one bothered me. I wasn't like, not having any fear particularly of where I'm going. Cause I know if to be absent from my body is to be present with the Lord. So I'm like, okay, so if I'm not here, I'll be with you. It's all good. But I was just having a general conversation and I was like, and the scripture came to my mind, what man is it that desires life and to love, to live many days that he may see good. He's like, look, if you want to live here so that you can see good, <laughs> that's a blessing. He's like, that's a good position to be in. Otherwise, if you feel like, man, it's all good. I can go. Then that's a good, that's a good position to be in. And we, I was just really literally just thinking about and, and molding over these things. And I thought, God, if I live here many days, <laughs> and this is what I said, if I live here many days, if you give me a long life, Lord, let it be a life that sees good. Let it be a life that, that pursues this concept of what is good. Like, I don't want to be here for a long time if I can't see what you have decided, decided to be good, right? Because there is good on this earth. Some people are like, well, you won't see good until you get to heaven. That's not true. There's good here. So I want to be able to see it. And so I thought about that. But I'm going to ask you to spend some time and I'm going to ask you to think about um, some things as well. Maybe not whether or not you'll be here for a long time and whether or not you'll see good. But I'm going to ask you to ask the question to God. The title of the devotion says, God, what is good? I'm going to ask you to ask God, God, what is good for me in this relationship? whatever relationship that might be. What is good for me here at this job? What is good for me here in, um, with these people? God, what is good for me? in this situation with these parameters or whatever's going on, what's good for me here? And I'm going to encourage you to listen. The scripture says very clearly that the, that the Lord speaks. And we don't just think that, that he speaks through the word. The scripture says that my sheep hear my voice and another they will not follow. That has no implication of actual scriptural words. It's talking about hearing, meaning we can hear from God. And so I want to encourage you to hear from God and to ask him, God, what is good? And then I'm going to ask you to continue to watch our devotionals. Tomorrow we're going to pick this up again, this concept of hope and what is good in the hope that we have. And um, I'm hoping that you'll be turning in and, and watching it because I feel God is saying we un need to understand what is good. Until tomorrow, be blessed. We're praying for you. We hope that you're praying for us. Goodbye.